Good afternoon or good morning. This is uh, part two of a presentation about diarrhea in dairy calves. And today we're going to be talking about uh, classification of calves with diarrhea. It's important to consider the classification when you're thinking about treatment. We'll be talking about treatment considerations and we'll have some take home messages for you. So let's get started. <clears throat> this is the Olson family. In the middle, we have uh, Dr. Merle Olson, and on his side is uh, his wife, Dr. Barb Olson. On the side of each of them are their two sons, and to your far right is Samantha Olson, who is married to Adam Olson. So, uh, what are we looking at when we have cast with diarrhea? First of all, let's look at the diarrhea score. The score of zero is normal, one is semi-formed or pasty, two is loose, and three is watery. This uh, chart is borrowed from Sheila McKirk, who is a real guru when it comes to calf health and uh, neonatal diseases. And she has devised a very nice app specifically for iPhones. So um, if you're interested in it, please Google Sheila McGurk and um, try to find her app. Calves with diarrhea, we need to look at three things. We look at the amount of dehydration, we look at the attitude, we look at the eyeball recession, and we look at the skin tent. So attitude can go from normal to comatose and deaths, the eyeball recession, how deep are the eyes in the head, can be normal or can be more than one centimeter, eight to 12 millimeter in their socket. The skin tinting is something I don't see done a lot, but I felt always that it was a really good tool. You uh, pick up a little piece of skin on the side on the neck and lift it up and then count how long it takes for the skin to be back to normal. And to give you an example, when the, the attitude of the calf is depressed, the eyeball is in about half a centimeter, and it takes between two and five seconds for the skin to be flat and normal again, then we're looking at a calf that needs intravenous fluid therapy. The treatment consists of several components. We have to restore the loss of fluids using uh, the chart I just showed you. And I like to remind you that when calves continue to scour when you're treating, you have to kind of stay ahead of the game and uh, think about maybe it's not that bad right now, but the way she is scouring, she will be worse in a few hours. We will be talking about the benefits of an anti-inflammatory therapy, the use of adsorbents, and last but not least, there are a few indications, and I stress the few, where antibiotics are really needed for uh, diarrhea. Desired characteristics of oral electrolytes are listed on these slides. So key is that we have a rapid electrolyte uptake and glycine is important for the transport of sodium and potassium in water, and it is important that glycine does not get degraded before the electrolytes are all used up. The product has to contain a proper alkalinizing agent, and we'll address that in more detail in a few slides. We want a rapid uh, dissolving of the electrolytes, and I can relate to that. I use electrolytes. I am uh, somebody who likes to do road bicycling, and some of the electrolytes I have, they don't dissolve. So when the bottle is empty, you see the electrolytes I paid for and wanted to drink are still at the bottom of the bottle. <clears throat> the components should not degrade. Uh, glycine is an example of that. And a nice flavored, a uh, solution will be met with the calf by the calf with a lot more enthusiasm than something you have to force down their throat. So 
I have here the acetate and propionate as the alkalinizing agents of choice and bicarbonate on the right. You'll see when you go down that acetate and propionate help getting the sodium and the water in. They produce energy when metabolized and they don't alkalinize the abomasum. And why is that important? Because when we have an E. coli or a salmonella issue on your farm, it's important that the abomasum will be able to maintain the pH at which E. coli and salmonella are able to get killed off. And last but not least, acetate and propionate, unlike bicarbonate, does not interfere with milk clotting. This slide I just like you to have a look at without me talking because it basically tells you the same thing. Look at the benefits of acetate and propionate. And even though bicarbonate has been used in a lot of old farmers uh, concoctions, really it is inferior to the use of acetate or propionate. So now I like to speak about osmolality a little bit. And osmolality becomes really a critical issue when calves have diarrhea. When you're healthy and up and around, uh, osmolality can be overcome or too high of an osmolality can be overcome. But if the calf has already diarrhea and uh, has a compromised intestinal tract, osmolality becomes a big issue. So to give you an idea, whole milk and most milk replacers are sitting between 275 and 300. High protein milk replacers uh, 25 to 28% protein are a lot higher. They can go over 600. Electrolytes, as uh, you can purchase, generally have between 350 and 400. While high energy electrolytes, something I don't really think a dairy farm should really have to apply, uh, to apply are, can be over 700. I'd like to speak uh, in a few slides about the, ex the, uh, the danger of exceeding the osmolality uh, over 600. The next slide, again, is for the people who are really liking to have a visual perspective. And uh, you'll see the blue line in the low range, and the high range is the red line. And um, you'll see the, that high energy electrolytes can be as low as 650 and as high as 700. The main difference between high energy electrolytes and regular electrolytes is, yes it is, dextrose, your sugar source. So what are the dangers of high osmolality feeding? It's the slower apomasal emptying. So calves may appear bloated. It can cause bloat and may worsen diarrhea because a high osmolality may attract fluid into the intestinal tract rather than getting the fluid into the animal. And it may disrupt the tight junction of intestinal cells, commonly known as causing leaky gut as a possible outcome. So my conclusions are never feed milk with high energy electrolytes and never feed any electrolytes with high protein milk replacer. If you need to feed electrolytes with these rations, they need to be given as a separate meal. And I will show that in a few slides that that is a practice we recommend, period. Solvet has been able to improve on existing products and they uh, brought out an electrolyte with an increased or an improved solubility, a product that saw a reduced crusting and caking and a silica powder that was added to um, um, slow down the, de the degradation of glycine. It has a flip 
top container for their two and four kilogram pails, the advantage being they close and open very easily. So unlike other products where this lid doesn't really fit well, uh, where the electrolyte bucket becomes a haven for flies, the easy to open and close on lids will keep the flies out. It's a very palatable flavored product. And as we will see, it has no interaction with meloxicam, an anti-inflammatory, or with activated charcoal, an absorbent. This is an example of a feeding scheme. Remember, I said when you use electrolytes, it's better not to uh, feed them with other products at the same time because you like to uh, control the osmolality. When we use the electrolyte solutions, the oral electrolyte solutions marked as OES, we recommend an extra feeding. And um, I can see some of you think already that is not going to happen on my farm. But I like to point out that taking that extra step will pay off. You will see your calves get back to health sooner. And you also will see that your mortality will probably be reduced. If calves um, do not want to drink the electrolytes or their milk, uh, one way to do it is to reduce the meal size and increase the frequent feeding frequency, and if needed, to tube feed the oral electrolytes. In general, we recommend to give oral electrolytes for uh, up to three days, and it has to be offered until uh, there is no sign of dehydration or diarrhea anymore. Ideally, you do not go beyond the three days. Anti-inflammatory drugs are going to be a real help when treating a calf with diarrhea. Uh, we have listed on this slide uh, a few of the benefits, and I will get into those benefits when I'll discuss the paper that was published uh, several years ago. This paper, uh, published in the Journal of Animal Science, looked at the use of onloxicam, an anti-inflammatory, versus a negative control. The interesting thing is that uh, there was no mortality, no dead animals in the meloxicam group. They consumed the daily milk faster. They consumed the starter ration better. They consumed the ration at greater rates. They drank more water, remember the fresh water. They gained weight at a faster rate and they weaned, weaned earlier. So what about meloxicam oral suspension? As you are aware, there are other meloxicam uh, presentations, the injectable ones. So the meloxicam oral suspension has as a benefit that you receive uh, higher and longer levels of protection. The bottom line for you, and I would advise to talk to your veterinarian, is that when you use oral meloxicam, looking at the levels here, the dark, uh, the solid line, the levels are as such that it is really not needed nor recommended to retreat with meloxicam oral suspension for at least five days in dairy calves. A study what was published in 2020 was looking at the use of meloxicam oral in scouring calves and if it was making a difference if the drug was presented either by itself in the mouth, in milk, or fed in the electrolytes. The interesting thing about this study was too that a lot of uh, pharmacokinetic studies, a lot of studies that look at the levels of the drug in the body are done in healthy animals. This study was done in calves that were actually scouring and they had rota and cryptosporidium. When you look at that, 
you see the blue line again is the injectable meloxicam, and the three other lines are uh, meloxicam oral in different presentations. The blue line, uh, the red line is the meloxicam direct, given, directly given in the mouse. The green line is the one given in the milk. And the purple line is the meloxicam given into electrolytes. As you can tell, there is very little difference. And so, again, uh, when you discuss it with your veterinarian, it would be a good topic of discussion because uh, the advantage and the ease of giving the meloxicam oral in an electrolyte solution or in milk is considerable. Activated charcoal. One of the things about activated charcoal, granted that it is messy, is that it has an enormous surface area. Actually, one teaspoon of activated charcoal has a surface area greater or equal than a football field. And Solvet is conducting currently a study to look at the cited efficacy against uh, Cryptosporidium parvum, a major cause of diarrhea in dairy calves. So the advantage of the activated charcoal it is its binding microorganisms and its binding toxins. This is um, a brief review of two studies where we showed that the non-specific binding for toxins, bacteria, viruses, and cryptosporidium are demonstrated. And the literature clearly shows that it is useful for removal of some of the toxins associated with E. coli. And um, <clears throat> the E. coli bacteria themselves. When you look at uh, the figure on the right hand side, you see the capacity of activated charcoal to absorb cryptosporidium. So as little as uh, 10 milligram of activated charcoal was able to reduce the number of, of oocysts uh, quite significantly, as you can tell uh, on the right hand side of your slide. Activated charcoal is used a lot uh, in calves, and um, when you talk to fellow producers, you'll see they use it for scours when they don't know what kind of scours they're dealing with. They use it in apple maisel ulcers. You know, that's, of course, a suspected diagnosis. They look use it for cryptosporidiosis. They look at for calves that have uh, that are not thriving uh, well. They have intermittent diarrhea and bloating. They use it in coccidiosis, and uh, some people, and we come to that again, is they like to use charcoal when they use antibiotics. Kale and pectate um, is uh, older than I am. And it is a product that meets the requirement for natural or organic food production. It is an aid in the production, in the treatment of scours. And it soothes kind of the uh, gastrointestinal membranes. It helps in the removal of the toxins. And it is easily staying in suspension. It's easy to use and quite palatable. However, you know, if you use it for several days, and the calf is not improving, um, I would advise to contact your veterinarian and uh, get a perspective on the treatment or maybe the cause of the diarrhea. <clears throat> I mentioned that I was going to be talking about antibiotic, and um, I like to talk about coxy boluses. And I think that is where uh, this bolus has a good place. It contains sulfamethazine, and sulfamethazine has been proven to be effective for controlling coccidiosis. The boluses can be used alongside electrolytes, charcoal, kaolin, and they can definitely be used alongside meloxicam. 
So what about the treatment of the calf scours and what about the role of antibiotics? The key is to start treating early. So to our right, uh, we see a scouring calf and uh, when she has a score of two, so the score of two is not yet watery diarrhea, but uh, or severe diarrhea already, nevertheless. Uh, oral electrolytes, anti-inflammatory drugs, and absorbents are the recommended route to go. So when are the antibiotics necessary? One thing to do is take a temperature. The other thing to do is look at the actual scours. Is there blood in the scours? And uh, the, the slide I will show in a few minutes will take you through the process of evaluating the calf in all the different stages. So the, calf, the cause of the uh, diarrhea can be nutritional, crypto, rhoda, corona, maybe even uh, E. coli. But again, that depends on the age of the calf and it's always a good time and always a good idea to do some additional diagnostics. So the guidelines for the treatment of calf scours, again, I would like to uh, uh, send you back and look at the app from the University of Wisconsin. Uh, the guidelines are you use electrolytes until the diarrhea subsides. The calves certainly do better if they continue their normal milk or milk replacer ration. Uh, the milk and the milk replacer have a lot of good nutrients in it, have um, um, a lot of energy in them, and um, they do better uh, as proven in several studies as compared to animals that are taken off milk or milk replacer totally. So feed only small amounts if they don't consume their full ration. The oral electrolytes can be too fat if needed. And again, as a final point, I do not recommend the routine use of high energy oral electrolytes because feeding milk is a much better source of energy. So, as we saw in the previous slide, uh, feed electrolytes as a separate meal. When you think about feeding electrolytes, think about the fluids that have been lost already and the fluids that will be lost in the next few hours. The guidelines, when you have a score of two, you give two liters at midday. When you have a score of four, uh, three, having a watery diarrhea, you feed two liters electrolytes at midday and mid-evening. Always include an anti-inflammatory drug. Consider the benefits of adsorbents and the antibiotics. Again, only warranted if the calf has a fever or is showing sickness signs or has bloody diarrhea. I like to take you to a flow chart about uh, calf scours. So we start with looking at the diarrhea score. Again, one is normal, semi-formed, two, loose, but stays on top of the bedding, and three is really watery, sifting through the battery, bedding. So on the left-hand side, you see the green bar. That's good, normal manure. So keep an eye on it, score one, uh, semi-formed. Let's see, is she drinking well? Is she active? Is uh, she looking good? On the right-hand side, we have the abnormal manure and treatment will be necessary. So we're looking here at the abnormal manure. So in other words, calves with a score two or three, and we're going to do a rectal temperature measurement. So we have on the left side, the temperature lower than 39.4 and the calf is bright and responsive. So three reasons why not to use an antibiotic. So no antibiotic warranted, 
So we're going to now assess the hydration, the suckle reflex, the mouth temperature, and the ability to rise. And we're probably going to go with the electrolytes, the non-steroidal uh, treatment, and the absorbance. However, if the calf's temperature is over 39.4 or is sick or depressed, antibiotics may be warranted. And again, uh, since it is an antibiotic, consult with your veterinarian and decide on an appropriate protocol for your production facility. So we had at the bottom on the last slide that we were going to assess the hydration, the suckle reflex, the mouse temperature, and the ability to rise. Now we're going to look at the eyes. Are the eyes not recessed or are they recessed? Is the mouth still warm? Is the calf able to rise? Then we're going to go with the oral fluids and with the score two, we give two liters. With the score three, we give four liters in addition to the normal milk and in addition to the anti-inflammatory uh, meloxicam oral solution. On the right-hand side, we have eyes that are a li little deeper in the socket the suckle reflex may not be as good. The mouth may be cold or she is weak and unable to rise. These are the type of animals I suggest you consult with your veterinarian, look at your protocol, and it may be that IV fluids are necessary. So what are our take-home messages for today? You know, treatment is not what we really like to go for. We like to focus our attention on prevention of scours. So i like you again to look at all aspects of your colostrum management and again uh, realize it's the devil is in the details. It's really important to look at the little things you can improve what make a big difference. Talk to your veterinarian, talk about evaluating your treatment protocol don't take calves of milk. Extra feedings with electrolytes are needed. And that is a great practice. And when you get used to it, yes, it is a little bit more work, uh, but it will pay off. Anti-inflammatory uh, medications like meloxicam oral suspension help recover the calf quickly. I would like you to take advantages of new diagnostic and monitoring tools. We talked about that in the first presentation. And we need to keep good records and use those records to make better decisions. Please only take uh, down the records you feel that are important for you to make decisions. Sometimes records are really becoming a big book, book full of data and um, it is written down so you feel good about it but you don't use it to make better decisions in the future and that should be a goal use antibiotics only when needed and we talked about those indications and the majority of the calves with diarrhea i would like to leave you with are not in need of an antibiotic so I'd like to thank you for your presentation and please feel free to contact Solvet if you have any questions on the presentation or you would like to learn more about any of our about any of our products. Thank you very much.